Hey guys, in this week's Econ project, we're going to bring back all those good memories by making a smartphone film scanner. With a few bendy straws, a 9 volt battery, and a bunch of office supplies, you can throw back and digitalize all those 35mm films that your parents kept from their childhood to yours. It's a fun, simple, yet interesting project that everyone can make. With the help of a free phone app, it instantly turns all your negative films into digital positives that you can share with your friends and family. Here are the things that you will need. First, you'll need two pieces of bendy straws. You'll also need two sheets of foam board an old LED flashlight, a cutter knife, a hot glue gun, a soldering iron, a white translucent piece of acrylic or plexiglass. You'll also need a 9 volt battery clip, a switch, and a 100 ohm resistor. And finally, we'll be powering our project with a 9 volt battery. Now let's measure the macro capability of your phone. We'll need to measure the closest possible distance that your phone's camera can focus on. I did this by moving my phone perpendicularly to my ruler to see the height at which my camera stays sharp. Now let's build the enclosure. I built my enclosure using the measurements I took previously. You can download the cardboard blueprints on a PDF file from the link below. For the left and right side panels, you'll need two 70 by 65 mm cutouts. Meanwhile, for the front and rear panels, you'll need two 120 by 65 mm cutouts. The top portion and the detachable backlight requires three 130 by 70 mm cutouts. I'll be using a glue gun to put together my cardboard enclosure. Now let's put an Apple product to good use. You can use some boxes that you may have lying around as a guide to form perfect 90 degree edges. It makes the aligning process a lot easier. Now do the same thing to the other end. If you're using foam board, be sure not to put too much hot glue because the styrofoam sandwich in between the paper could melt. Now let's install the front and the rear side panels. Then again, you can join the edges by using some hot glue. And now you've built the top portion of the enclosure. Next, we'll need to cut a hole at the very center of the top part of the enclosure. Make sure that your phone's camera can see right through. I'm recycling a scrap piece of plexiglass from an old project of mine for my light diffuser. If you don't have one, then you can buy one from your local hardware store. If it's too big, use a hacksaw to cut it down to a 40 by 45 mm rectangle. Now position your diffuser on top of another cardboard cutout. We'll also be using it as a template for cutting a hole through the foam board. Once you're done, your diffuser should fit snugly right in between your foam board. By applying light behind the diffuser, you should be able to clearly view your film. The diffuser helps spread light evenly creating a nice backlight for viewing. You can hold the diffuser in place by applying hot glue around the edges. I've also cut some strips of foam board as a feed guide for the film. This time I'm using Elmer's glue to hold it in place because this is a very delicate part of the project. Do the same thing for both ends. Now you have a feed guide for your film. I added some weights and let the glue dry for a few minutes. In the meantime, let's recycle some LEDs for the simple electronics. I kept this LED flashlight around knowing that the only thing broken about it was the switch. The LEDs inside were pretty much fine. I tore it apart and just got the board that was holding all the LEDs. Using my soldering iron and my desoldering pump, I desoldered all the joints. If you don't want to get through all this trouble, you can just buy a bunch of LEDs online. Once you're done desoldering, you can now extract the LEDs from the board. And now you have a light source for your backlight. 
I discovered that you can use some bendy straws to further diffuse the light coming from your LEDs. I got to my bench power supply and set it to 3 volts then hooked it up to an LED. I did find out that bendy straws were very effective at diffusing light perpendicularly from the light source. It kinda does look like a lightsaber. Now let's cut some bendy straws. Get a ruler and cut it at about 70 millimeters. You'll need 3 of these 70mm bendy straws. Carefully hot glue one of your bendy straws across the center of your diffuser. Do it again but this time at the sides. The more bendy straws, the better, but I did find out that 3 was more than enough. For the light source, we'll be inserting LEDs at both ends of the bendy straws. And now you have a well diffused light source. The tubes kinda resemble the old school fluorescent lamps. Now let's talk about the wiring. Unlike incandescent bulbs, an LED has an anode and a cathode. In order for it to work, you must connect it to its respective polarity. We have a series parallel combination of LEDs. Each LED consumes 3 volts. You'll need 3 of them in series for it to work with a 9 volt battery. The other series combination is then connected in parallel to the other set of LEDs. A resistor is connected in series to the switch, battery, and LEDs as a simple current protection device. If you don't have one, you can simply omit the resistor since the chances of a 9 volt battery going above its voltage are slim. After finishing the wiring, we can now install the 9V battery. You can strategically hot glue it in place above the film's feed guide. Just make sure it does not obstruct the view from the diffuser. It's powered it on, and that's beautiful. Now you have a well diffused backlight. All that's left is to finish the enclosure. I won't be completely sealing the bottom since the glowing effect kinda looks cool. Instead, I stack two pieces of foam board as pillars, then hot glue the piece of foam board for the base. Be sure to apply enough hot glue for it not to wobble later on. Now here's how you use the project. First, you'll need to find a film that you would want to digitalize or scan. The project works by putting a backlight behind the film. Inverting the colors of a negative film via software converts the colors to which your eyes would usually see. Now we'll need to power the box and feed in the film. The reason why I chose to use a black foam board was to purposely prevent the light from bouncing around the box. This prevents unwanted glares. What you're seeing is a two-stage light diffuser system. This creates a perfectly lit and affordable backlight. Now let's talk about the phone app. A quick search from the Play Store shows that there's a ton of options for this project. But after comparing several color inverting camera apps, I found out that the negative image app by CADA Studio was the easiest to use. Just open the app and you're ready to scan. And that's how you build a smartphone film scanner. If you liked the video, press the thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more, feel free to subscribe. Enjoy and thanks for watching.